Welcome to the Bob Balance HealthCast, episode number 378, Top 10 Big Ideas, How to Detox from Sugar. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. This week, we one of the things that we constantly do in preparation for these podcasts is research to say what's new out there, what's out there that, that we can beg, borrow, or steal. It's kind of like when I was teaching school, <laughs> teachers always steal ideas from other places mm-hmm. uh, to say, this might make this lesson more vibrant. This might make this lesson have more impact. Or here's new facts, new science, new information that's relevant to, to what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And and as you focus in your practice on helping move the American medical system from <laughs> in, in, interventions uh, after the fact to preventive with a butter knife. medical care. <laughs> pushing, yeah. pushing a mountain with a butter knife. Oh, yeah. Push them, kicking and screaming uh, <laughs> towards progress, focusing on preventive medicine. One of the things that constantly comes up in conversations and in the research that we do uh, is concerns about diet, sugar, mm-hmm. obesity, mm-hmm. Uh, diabetes, mm-hmm. uh, and so we've done a lot of podcasts that address those topics. And this week we found a website. There's a physician named uh, Mark Hyman uh, who has published this He's information. He's very well known He's for published a book preventive medicine. on how to detox yourself from addictions to sugar. And he says that in, in his material, he says that sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. So why don't we have like laws against sugar? I mean, really, police, well, <laughs> the sugar police. <laughs> I saw somebody post on the uh, internet just the other day. It's like, can I smoke marijuana? Oh no, that's illegal. Okay, then can I buy a semi-automatic rifle? <laughs> yeah. Well, our, our culture is not consistent. That's true. Consistency is the hobgoblin of simple minds. How, however, <laughs> is what they say. However, yeah. when we're talking about sugar, sugar, sugar and flour are two refined foods. Right. That we weren't really meant to consume. Refined means processed. Processed. Processed so that most of the nutrition is is, is taken out of it so that we can enjoy it more. Mm-hmm. So we've given ourselves all these goodies. I mean, I don't know if I don't know how old our you guys are out there, but when I was a kid, I mean, one piece of candy was a treat. That yeah. was a big deal, not a not a big bar of chocolate, not a, I mean, it was one piece of candy. That was like, oh my gosh, I waited all week for this. That's the only sugar I had. Well, I mean, now, that's not what we grew up on. No, it, and, it's not. And things have changed in part because the federal government recommended a food pyramid. <laughs> that was that wrong. We all had to learn to eat the balance in the food pyramid. And the food pyramid was heavily overladen with corn syrup products, which because we grow sugars, corn, <laughs> because we want to support the corn market mm-hmm. and the farmers and flour and and carbs, all those things. Uh, so yeah, you you get this stuff to eat, and and we moved in the as, as, after World War II when more and more women went into the workplace, mm-hmm. and fewer of them were staying at home as full time stay at home yes, moms, thank they, you, who were not quote working. <laughs> uh, so now that more of them are working, we've changed our whole approach to food and fast food, fast mm-hmm. food uh, consumption, accessibility. The, the fact that, uh, I mean, there's so many of the things that you can identify, like, like children being raised who could roam their neighborhood and ride bikes and mm-hmm. play pickup ball games. At the, we lock them in the house so nobody takes them. They're on TV I mean, or I'm they're on sure. digital media yeah. and, no, and nobody steals them. Or yeah. they, go to, they go to regulated activities like ball practice. Uh, Mm -hmm. that we take them to. So we pick them up after school, put them in a car, drive them to ball practice, take them from ball practice to piano practice. But before we go from from ball practice to piano practice, we run through a fast food location and buy them them. burgers or chicken or pizza or something. Instead of preparing it ahead. So so we need to, we have one advantage over when I was a kid, and that is that we have a, a huge amount of fresh food available. 
yeah. at all times of the year in the United States. Yes, Therefore, marketplace does allow, but it it's expensive. It is different. It's, it is, but it's also covered by... Um, by WIC and some of these, I mean, you can, fresh food is covered by many of the, of the, um, plans that we have for people who don't have social money. network plans. Yes. So, yeah. yeah. Social, social, socializing meant, you know, in any case, we do pay for that for, for people who don't have good incomes, mm -hmm. but you can still buy fresh food and fresh food that will fill you up for less than you can buy some processed foods. Well, except in suburban areas, we have what are called food deserts. And in a lot of uh, poor neighborhoods, they don't have grocery stores that do stock these things. They well, stock I live instead. on a bus line. They come, people come out on the bus line to, to if my If they can, in to your neighborhood, store. that's true. But, they don't but live there's there. a lot of data that says in our society at large, large, poor, ghetto areas are what are called food sinks where they don't have fresh food. And I can't fix that part. No, you can't. I can only fix. No. I can only fix what people are hearing, and that is that we we had a bad food pyramid, and we did not have access to food all year round that was fresh. Now we do, yes. and for some reason, we don't have gardens. I think it's just because we all live in cities, or many of us live in cities. So, so we don't get fresh food from our own garden, and we don't store it. For ourselves, anyway, in any case. We don't can it. I we remember can it. canning yeah. vegetables, or, blanching yeah. vegetables. Right, and freezing them. Yeah. And so we don't do that anymore, partially just because it takes so long. But we now have access to good food from all over the world at any time. So we can eat well, and the Mediterranean diet is the ideal diet, which is fresh meat that is not injected with anything. Right. Uh, and as well as... Fresh fish, and you can get that now too everywhere in the United States. Not everywhere in the in in each uh, in each neighborhood, but but there is also we have fresh fruit and vegetables, so that we can eat that if we can we can get it, we can cook it. It doesn't take long to steam anything, so it's not. It, it's not really onerous to eat like that, but that's the diet we should be eating. Exactly. I, I remember as a kid, my parents would, on, on a regular basis, we'd, we'd load up in the car and we'd drive out to what were called truck farms, mm -hmm. which were on the periphery of the suburban area mm -hmm. where we live. And the, they were called truck farms because the farmers would raise fresh vegetables mm -hmm. and then truck them into the grocery stores. And mm -hmm. that's where the fresh food came from. But we would drive out to the truck farm mm -hmm. because it was cheaper to go mm -hmm. out there and pick bushels of corn mm -hmm. and then come home and make... Uh, you know, we we blanch corn and can it and, and can it. Mm -hmm. uh, we make hominy, mm -hmm. uh, which killed it. We we bleached it all mm -hmm. out so there were no nutrients left yeah. in it. But it was filler, <laughs> and so we could eat that. Uh, make guys, grits and things like. That. But, but yeah. we would go and get those fresh food mm -hmm. products and bring them home. You and can fix do that them. here. You can go out and and pick apples and pick right. strawberries. We've done all of those. You know, they there's there are many farms in Illinois that that we can just go across the river and pick our own basically. Right. And it's, it, and it's fun and kids like it and they get to know where food comes from, but it's also healthy when you bring it home. So that's the kind of diet we're looking for. However, we have to get patients, everybody past the sugar addiction. And to do so, it takes 10 days. That's all 10 days out of your life of following the, these rules that Mark Hyman has. That's what Hyman recommends in his book is 10 days to detoxify sugar. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let me read something that he says. This is a quotation from him. The facts are in. The science is beyond question. Sugar in all of its forms is the root cause of our obesity epidemic and most of the chronic disease sucking the life out of our citizens and our economy. Mm -hmm. And increasingly the rest of the world, you name it, it's caused by sugar, heart disease, cancer, dementia, type 2 diabetes, depression, and even acne, infertility, mm -hmm. and impotence yep. are all caused by an excess ingestion of sugar in our diet. So he says, what can we do about that? Uh, he says, the average American consumes about 152 pounds of sugar a year, which is roughly 22 teaspoons every day for every person in America. And in addition to that, we consume about 146 pounds of flour. Mm -hmm. So... That is killing us, according to Dr. Mm -hmm. Hyman. And he says you need to change the way you understand and respond to the food options that you have. Mm -hmm. And he recommends a 10-day 
detox program to wean yourself off of the sugars and flowers mm -hmm. that you normally ingest. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean you have to give them up forever. And it doesn't mean that, well, what it does mean is you can't just keep sucking them into your bloodstream and, and your body if you want to live and you want to live healthy. Right. And it doesn't mean that you do this for 10 days, you lose weight because you're going to lose water weight because carbohydrates make you swell and make you retain a lot of fluid. You're going to lose water weight. You're going to lose weight weight. And then you go, oh gosh, I lost 10 pounds and go back to eating the way you did. Right. This is not the goal. The goal is to detox you so that you can then enter a whole new world of eating, which is clean out your pantry, get rid of all, get rid of all processed foods. I mean, if they're there, you're going to eat them. That means cookies, chips. I mean, so you much can leave nuts in planning there. Planning and preparation. Right. And, uh, and what is easy for you to eat? You have to stop making it so easy. So Dr. Hyman says that we need uh, science, not willpower, <laughs> to change our approach to food. Mm -hmm. And then we can do it and we can accomplish it in 10 days or less. And so he, he comes up with what is called the blood sugar solution a 10 day detox diet. Mm -hmm. And so there are steps that he recommends that we take over a 10 day period uh, or, or for a 10 day period that will help us wean ourselves off of this addictive substance and then hopefully follow a healthier path forward so that we don't get re-addicted. Right. So the first thing he recommends is make a decision to detox. It has to be a proactive plan. You can't just accomplish it without intentionality and effort. Mm -hmm. So you have to make a decision. I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it 10 days to see where that puts me on the other end mm -hmm. in, in terms of what I hunger for, what I crave. But, but at the end of this, you don't crave sugar. You don't That's look at it point. in the same way. Yes. You don't look at it. You don't experience it the same way because mm -hmm. you've detoxified your body. Mm -hmm. You've broken that cycle. So, so when I was, so when I was, um, I had wrecked my body in college. I drank 18, no, 16 cups of coffee a day and didn't eat much except carb because so that's caffeine. caffeine and carb. So my hair started to fall out. I gained 10 pounds. I looked terrible. I went to a holistic DO doctor in Kansas City in Parkville. It was an hour away from our house. It was on the whole other side of town. And my, but my mother was an herbalist and very natural, and she knew that there was something really wrong. And this gal found out, figured out, that I had ruined my body with caffeine and I had insulin resistance. I was pre-diabetic because I had not taken in any protein or fat, and I had just taken in carbs and caffeine. So caffeine makes you insulin resistant, which makes you gain weight, even if you're not eating much. So she put me on a one-year... So you were on two of the big three. Yeah. Caffeine, chocolate, and cigarettes are the big three. Yeah, but I wasn't on the other. You two. weren't on. The, you weren't on that. But I. But the. But the caffeine was keeping me up. When, even when I felt terrible, it was kind of like my relief. Which. So she took. Which ended up that she took me off everything. I, I had no caffeine. Took me. I went to sleep for about a week after that. Then she took me off all carbs. All everything except. Fresca was the only um, saccharin-like soda that there was. She let me have that, eggs, and salad. That's all I ate for three months. Then when I went back to school, then I could eat proteins and fats and very little carb and one cup of coffee a day. Yeah. But no alcohol for a year, which when you're in college, that impacts you. <laughs> But I mean, it didn't, I mean, I didn't miss it. It just socially impacted me. Right. So, so it was one of those things that after that, I never wanted to do that again. That was my detox. Yeah. And that was a huge detox compared to this. This you can do. Yeah. I mean, if I could do that when I was Without 19 or 20. Like if you're trying to come off of drugs or something. Oh yeah. I, but and you go, I had withdrawal from this because I slept and slept and slept. It was like a week and a half of sleeping. Well, that brings us to his second recommendation. The first one is you have to make a proactive, affirmative decision. Right. I'm mm -hmm. going to do this. The second one is be go cold turkey. Right. You just stop today. Right. And you say, I'm going to find these food products that are full of uh, greens and not sugar. And I say, clean your, clean your pantry out. Dump everything. You do. Go, go home and clean out what's already there. Go home and clean the, out what's already there because you will not stay on that diet if you have it there. So this, that's it's it's cold turkey or nothing. And, and cold turkey means you start eating protein, 
fat and dark green leafy vegetables. Right. That that's your carb. All right. Your carb is dark green leafy vegetable carb. The third thing he says you have to decide to do is not drink your calories. And particularly those of us Americans who are addicted to every time we get in the car to go somewhere, we have to have a soda uh, of some kind. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and a lot of people say, well, you know what? I drink diet soda, so it's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. It is a big deal mm -hmm. because the artificial sweeteners are still a sugar addiction. Yeah. And Dr. Hyman says, you need to give all that stuff up. So if you're going to drink anything, for God's sake, drink water. We need to be all drinking more water mm -hmm. anyway to help flush out our system and flush out the toxins that are in it mm -hmm. and hydrate us. And if so, we need some sweetener, stevia is not a chemical. Stevia is a plant. And stevia is a is an acceptable sweetener. Okay. Does not to, stimulate insulin. To add to the water. To add to the water, or to whatever. add to tea. Okay. I mean, if you had herbal tea, you could have herbal tea and stevia. All right. His fourth recommendation is power up with protein. Mm -hmm. And he recommends that you, especially for breakfast, breakfast is one, the most, generally considered to be the most important meal of the day, of the day, and you need protein for breakfast. And that requires a little thought and planning if you're going to do that. So you can't grab a donut or a piece of but cake. But you can grab two boiled eggs. It, yeah. I mean, you can well, boil the whole dozen on Sunday and have them ready for the two week. Two eggs every day of the week. I mean, I have them in the fridge right yeah. now. I mean, you just grab them and eat them and that's it. You're not hungry anymore. Mm -hmm. So he, but he wants you to eat a protein shake and some farm eggs and, and some green stuff to just give you some right. vitamins. His recommendations, uh, protein in every meal, especially at breakfast. Mm -hmm. And then he says, uh, eat only the non-starchy vegetables such as greens, the broccoli family, cauliflower, kale, collard greens, etc. Asparagus, green beans, mushrooms, onions, zucchini, tomatoes, fennel, eggplant, artichoke, and peppers. Stay away from potatoes of any kind, even sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. uh, and stay away from the starches. Now, my low-carb diet that you can follow after this mm -hmm. has sweet potatoes added back in. Yes. But not in this part. Right. So you, you re-expose yourself to the riskier stuff in limited qualified amounts. Mm -hmm. And the main part of that is you have to teach yourself to cook your meals. You yeah. can't just stop at a fast food place. And plan them ahead of time. And and you can't just buy something in a can off the shelf because it's going to be a processed food. Most women have done this because when they were pregnant, they did this. I mean, when you're pregnant, you don't just eat junk because you're t eating for somebody else. Hopefully. So if, I mean, hopefully. So if you had a really good diet when you were pregnant, think back to what you were doing then because it wasn't a junk diet. It was you were trying to eat for your child. Well, and again, it's that proactive, uh, positive interaction to say, I am going to require myself to shop, prepare, and eat mm -hmm. these ways. And there's a lot of things in this diet that we've been told not to eat, like butter. I mean, well, that's butter, the next thing, butter, number six, you, is fight you, sugar with fat. Right. Put fat back in your diet. Fat's going to be healthy for you. So so I make low-carb um Mashed, carb, high fat. mashed potatoes. They have sour cream, cream cheese, butter, um, and and potatoes. But there's so there's so much of the fats in it. Uh -huh. You can't eat very much. Well, my wife will do that, but she does it with cauliflower. Right. You, you make fake mashed potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they, that, they look that works, and taste like mashed potatoes, but it's cauliflower. That works great, except my husband won't do that. So, yeah. <laughs> I mean. At least I got him to eat the high, the low carb mashed potatoes. So, um, in any case, so replacing what we used to say with with what we used to say we couldn't eat, we can eat now. We can eat butter. We can, you know, we can eat cream cheese. We can eat sour cream. Those are all things that fill you up and they avocado. sustain your blood sugar. Yeah, avocados. Yeah, awesome. natural fat substances are, are good. But the but the next thing that I've always said this is you have to be ready for emergencies. You've got to have a protein bar or a bag of nuts in your purse or in your so car you all the time. Don't look for a sugar high. You know, right. we're again, it's so easy to just walk in a grocery store and buy a candy bar. Uh, and, and then we get that sugar rush of energy that burns very quickly and then depletes or exhausts mm -hmm. us. But a, a lot of new age moms are doing that with their children. They're carrying a little bag of nuts or they're mm -hmm. carrying. Uh, you know, fruit slices, apples, mm -hmm. those kinds of things to give the kids instead of processed sugar. Right. 
But Dr. Hyman recommends that you plan and, and mm -hmm. take with you in your car or in your briefcase or in your kid's lunch bag uh, an emergency pack for when you get hungry or you have a craving, something that you can eat that's healthy that won't feed back into the addictive cycle of all that sugar consumption. There's some pro new protein bars called RX bars meaning script bars, but RX bars, they're really good, really dense. They taste pretty good. They fill you up and they get rid of the craving. So you could use that. It is processed, but it's natural. Yes. So that would be something that you could, that would be fast and that you could buy. So you're, so, so, so number the eight, the next one's your, 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 well, um, actually so be book. ready for emergency. It's what we just did. Number seven, mm -hmm. number eight is swap distress for, uh, de-stress. When I was studying about stress, they, they taught us there were two different interpretive realities. One is distress and one is what they call eustress. That your body can't tell the difference. Uh, you have a surge of reaction. Like if you find a $100 bill on the street, mm -hmm. you'll get a, a surge that your body uh, of, of energy, flight or fight, whatever. What is that? That you call positive stress mm -hmm. or eustress. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing if something bad, you know, somebody stole your car. You'd have a surge of distress. Mm -hmm. So what we work with people on doing is learning how to moderate their stress. If you can't change your overall environment, you, you can't quit your job. Maybe your boss is stressful uh, or you're going into a situation like you have to give a speech. My, my wife hates having to give a speech. She's so <laughs> convinced that she can't do it. Mm -hmm. And she's a school teacher and to have to give a presentation to parents mm -hmm. or something would terrify her for weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. She'd just get so upset about it, not sleeping, not relaxing. And I would work with her on some of these skills. Mm -hmm. uh, you can learn to meditate. You can learn to deep breathe. You can learn to do relaxation exercises. There are things that you can do. Uh, like in the, in the 70s, they used to talk about uh, isometric exercises, mm -hmm. uh, counter pressure mm -hmm. against you know, muscle against muscle mm -hmm. while you're sitting at your desk. Uh, today, we talk about uh, working at a stand-up desk. Don't sit all the time. Uh, do deep breathing. It, literally, mm -hmm. one of the best things you can teach yourself to do is before you go into a situation where there might be stress or if you're in a situation where stress is occurring, if you can take a little break without even getting out of your chair and just do deep breathing, mm -hmm. do slow, regular intakes of breath, five count in, hold it for a five count, let it out for a five count, do five or 10 deep breaths. That helps reset your entire perspective and your body. That will lower your blood pressure. It will help you not crave the sugar high. It will help you overall. So Dr. Hyman recommends it, as do I. Work on the skill sets for learning how to de-stress your body. Uh, if you can't change, uh, Victor Frankl, uh, concentration, concentration camp uh, survivor from World War II, wrote a book about his experience. And one of the things that he said in his book is, if you cannot change your reality. I'm in this concentration camp. People are trying to kill me. If you want to survive and come out of this with any kind of healthy capacity, mm -hmm. you have to change the way you interpret reality. So you have to redefine what's going on. Mm -hmm. Learning how to de-stress and specific skills for doing that can help you accomplish. We that. did that in residency. Yes. We'd have to, it, in it, those well, days. Because residency was intentionally stressful. Right. They wanted to push you beyond your capacity. Right. So for 36 hours, we yeah. would be on call. And we would be handling all kinds of emergencies. And so at the, the end of the work day and the beginning of the call day would be like 7 p.m. So at 7 p.m., I would say out loud and to myself over and over, this is great. We're going to stay up all night. We're going to get all this experience. It's going to be, you know, we're going to help people. We're, you know, so in my mind, I kept saying that to myself so that I could stay up all night and I wasn't crabby. Like right. everybody else. Right. So that's, so I changed my reality of what a 36 hour call could be. Cause it could be like, ah, oh, I'm not going to get to sleep. I'm not going to get to eat. I'm not, you know, none of the comforts that people have at the end of their day. Right. So, but you have to, we had to change our minds. So reset. that's, that's the same thing you have to do about eating. Many times I had to, when I shouldn't eat sugar, I'd look at it and I'd think, dog do or whatever, you know, something horrible that smells horrible and feels and, and tastes horrible. I would just think something else. And I would try to put that in, in my brain. And so, I mean, 
There used to be a, a cartoon when I was a kid, uh, a big chicken called Foghorn Leghorn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he would always get angry about whatever was going on. He would get bright red and then he would explode. Mm-hmm. And so <laughs> in the cartoons, he learned to count to 10, to slow that process down. Uh, and it would help yeah. him moderate mm-hmm. it regularly. And these are the kind of skills we're talking about. But when he was in a real hurry, he'd count by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten, <laughs> and then he'd be striped, white, red, white, red, white, red. <laughs> yeah. But can't those rush it. skills make a difference. They're real, they're manageable. You can learn them. They don't cost a dime, but you mm-hmm. can improve your circumstances <coughs> if you learn to de stress. Mm-hmm. So inflammation is the next one. The ninth thing. one. The ninth one is inflammation is. What ages us? Inflammation is when all of your um, inflammation response that should happen when you're cut or when you're sick, it should happen and then it should sh- go, go away. When inflammation is constant, then it actually starts damaging your tissues and it damages your blood vessels and it, it damages your brain and it makes us old. We look and feel old. So inflammation is fed by three things, uh, sugar, flour, and trans fats, like the stuff that they um, put Kentucky Fried Chicken in, you know, that kind, that kind of fat. It's not the omega fats. It's not the good fats from from uh, sesame seeds or, I mean, it's yeah. trans fats. So we're saying now you can eat fats when we used to say you couldn't eat fats. Right. But you can eat the healthy fats. Healthy fats, not, not the, the trans, trans fats. fats. So stay away from those. So, so basically, gluten and dairy... Mm-hmm. are also inflammatory. So we try to stay away from that. And those are the things that are inflammatory to some people. Now, in this in this diet, this is what you're supposed to stay away from. You're supposed to stay away from dairy. You're supposed to stay away from... For those 10 days. From flour, for those 10 days. But you can add them back, and I would suggest when you add them back, add them back by ones. Like one, you would add them back with the milk products. Do that for three days. How do you feel? Right. Do, then you can add back the flour, add that back in some in small amounts because it's M- moderation. Moderation, yeah. and then see how you feel. If it made you feel bad, then you, you you don't need to eat that. And then the last one that Dr. Hyman recommends is you need to get sleep. You need to get good sleep. Uh, and actually, there are a lot of studies that have been coming out in the last six months that focus on the importance of sleep. And what we've learned about the science of that is that while you are asleep, that is how, that is when and how your brain detoxifies itself Mm -hmm. and all the, the activity that's taking place in your brain that's, that's generated physiological byproducts, you know, from, from cell energy consumption, Mm -hmm. uh, the, the waste products that your kidneys and bowels usually flush out of your whole body. Those get flushed out of your brain when you're asleep. Mm -hmm. And so the science is telling us, especially for older people, the the better quality and duration of sleep that you can have, the better health and longevity you will have. Right. Some people can't sleep because they don't have testosterone or estrogen. We fix that. Right. So if you're having hot flashes all night or... You don't have any testosterone. You can't get into deep sleep. So we fix that part. All these things that happen. Yeah, so. but but you should. Even my phone tells me when to go to bed. You know, my phone dings and goes, it's "Time a for bed." Alarm. Yeah, if yeah, you, my bedtime you can alarm. Set it, so you yeah. can set it so that it's time to go to bed at whatever ten thirty or something. Yeah. You know, so at least you're reminded. So these are the ten steps that you can follow. And what Dr. Hyman says in his diet is, you can do this for ten days, and that will break your addiction to sugar which will then put you on the path to options for Mm -hmm. healthy living and longevity. So thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.